here's something I was thinking about, Abby. I read a story, you know, how we, we lost Bob Saget, which is a huge tragedy. Watched him pretty much our whole lives. And uh, someone who was on a show, I forget who it was, she said that she didn't want to mess at all with her phone or even read his old texts because she's worried she might delete them. Which is an interesting thing because I'm, I could see not wanting to, you know, worry about that. But how do you think any of these issues of having like sentimental messages or voicemails on your phone, like factors into a person's life. If they're even thinking about it, but right. I think that, I think that, um, today I was thinking about it the other day because I was looking at all of my, I have like 500 (laughs) voicemails on my phone that need to be deleted. And every so often, I mean, not really 500 because my phone probably wouldn't work, but I I was looking at them um, and trying to delete as many as I could. And then I realized that the reason why I have so many is because I tend to keep a lot of the recordings from, not recordings, but just the voicemails from my parents. And I have a few voicemails from my husband's grandparents who I'm really close with. My grandparents are, are, they're not alive anymore, but his grandparents became like my grandparents. And so I treasure those voicemails and I keep trying to remember to save them. I realize though, I think I can export them from the iPhone. So I don't have to be so worried about it anymore, but I have like three gems of you know, I don't know, voicemails where they called to wish me a happy birthday or called to to congratulate me on the launch of the book, or they were like totally with it. Um, Ben's grandmother was totally with it until the day she died. And so um, I do think that people, if they, if they can think about it, it's a good idea to just, right, save some of those. But I will- that, that, that's a great, and you mentioned about the export, because I had to do that. Uh I was kind of forced to do it because when my phone service was changing to a different platform or a different provider, they said, you might lose your voicemails. So I kind of panicked. And at first I remembered the old days where I'd actually hold a tape recorder up to an answering machine to have that. Uh, Now I don't know where those tapes are or how to actually access those tapes, even if I did have it. Uh, But then I started to use the voice memo or recording on a phone to start finding ways like how could I play this message and now you can download them and people would have to look it up you just go to Google and say how do I keep my voicemails and there's ways to download it as a file and then I saved them on my computer in a bunch of places because I realized that's the thing with my mom she always left messages and when she left messages it was either very much hi call me like every time there was never a hang up like I never leave a message to anybody ever I just don't I think that's like how it is just me calling is the message (laughs) like okay I see the number but I realize every single time parents will leave a message no matter what. Hi, just call and call me back. But then there's also so many that are when they miss you on your birthday, because a lot of times they'll call on your birthday, you just answer. But sometimes you're not around. So you get that birthday message. And every holiday, because usually you could be out. So in a way, it was almost good when I missed answering the phone at those times. So I got that message and now I have it. And it's true because that voice, you lose it. You don't have any other way to keep it. So when you back it up, would you, so you haven't done it yet, Abby, though, with your 500. And I guarantee you have more than 500. But Oh, no, 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 no. My 500 are, are my 500, it's like 490 of them are going to be deleted forever. And they're just like, so, not, not, they're not all my parents. It's just all the messages you that don't, I have on my phone that I haven't deleted. Okay, habit um, forming right now. And this happened to me earlier today. I got a call from one of those robocalls. Hey, we're redistricting. <laughs> delete. Like if it's not, if it's a message that is spam, I know. delete it it's immediately. A it's a habit to get into, whatever. So I think that there's, I think there's two habits that, or there's a few habits that we, you know, that, that could come from this. But one of them is just deleting your voicemails that you don't need so that your phone has enough storage on it um, and can function properly. But the other is like, if you get an interesting voicemail, just think that you might want to save yeah. it. And then. The other is that once you do save them, you should probably put them somewhere not on your phone or just make sure that they're backed up. Yep. I think that there's um, there's there's just making sure that those kinds of uh, memories don't get lost or thinking about recording them in the first place. Yeah. 
I guess in your case, Jean, it's like, don't answer, maybe don't answer your phone on your birthday. So you get a birthday message on your phone and that way you can. <laughs> uh, and backing it up, once you have it backed up, I mean, people wonder where you put it. I mean, for me, I'll have one locally saved on my computers. Like I'll, I overdo it. And then I'll like have an old Dropbox that it's still like under the storage. Cause these messages take up like zero space. They're not like videos. Uh, Dropbox. I actually, Google I actually Drive. think I like keeping them on my phone. There too. I think I like keeping them on my phone because sometimes I just go in and yes. listen to them. Even, you know, my parents are alive, but it just, it's, or my grandparents, mm -hmm. um, like my husband's grandparents, like I was saying, sometimes I just go in and listen. And I'm like, Oh, but the other, the other thing is the other day we were driving, we had a really long car ride because we were driving from New York to, um, actually from Connecticut to Washington, DC. And it was taking us forever. And so we're trying to think of what, what would be interesting for us to do right now. And I don't know why my, my 10 year old started talking about my grandmother and she was asking about her. And I was like, actually, we have an audio, uh, uh, an oral history that we could listen to for two hours all about Grandma D. And so we started playing it and it was incredible. Um, I guess a long time ago, we had paid for her. This was my grandmother, my dad's mom. Um, we called her Grandma D. And she was the most incredible person. And we, and she had the most incredible memory. She, she came here to the United States from Russia. Um, and so she, we did an uh, oral history with her where we hired somebody to come and talk to her for many hours and produce a recording of her answering all sorts of questions about her family history, her life, what it was like coming here from Russia, um, where, what was her life in Russia like, all of these things that frankly, I didn't even know. And even if I did know at one point, I had forgotten all the details. And it was just unbelievable to be able to go in our car, listen for two hours and, and have my daughter learn all about Grandma D. Um, and it made me realize that um, a, I want to do this for my parents. Um, but also I, I should probably do one for myself because I do not think when I'm grandma D's age, I'm going to be remembering all the details that she remembered. <laughs> I want, wait, do, is, was it like an MP3? You just have it like on your phone or did you upload it somewhere? Like, how does that, is it just a file? Um, I'm assuming when you did it, was it like on a CD or a tape that you transferred over? They, they did it. Yeah, they did it. When they did it, it was on, they give you like a big at least very clunky <laughs> at the time it was like this very big clunky i don't even know what you call it, it looks like an encyclopedia and inside uh -huh. the encyclopedia is a cd uh -huh. um and and it, and and i guess one of my i think one of my cousins actually um turned it into uh it uploaded it into some uh, soundcloud yeah. and i think we have a soundcloud link and so in the car we were listening to it on wi-fi um, through the SoundCloud link. It was amazing. And, and also just kind of interesting. My grandmother was from the Ukraine. I had no idea. Like, you know, with everything going on in the news today, I was like, Winnie, this is so relevant. Grandma D is from the Ukraine. Um, anyways, it's just, I think there's lots of ways that people could go about doing that today. Um, obviously the technology is totally different than it was probably 20 years ago. Um, but but even even just like people could do it on their own. They don't need a professional to come in and ask them all the questions. I mean, I'll say so, you know, there's something about uh, digitizing old memories, such as a old wedding video, a confirmation, bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah, big graduation, anniversaries, uh, other events that are probably sitting somewhere that now, like, why wouldn't you just put that on your phone or have it somewhere that you can access it? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I have a pic, I have two cherished photos. Well, actually, one's a photo and one's a video of my brother and before he died. And the first is the only picture I have of him with Winnie, who was one at the time because my brother died two days before her first birthday. So he, we, we have a picture of him feeding her in her high chair. That's the only picture I have like that. And then we have this video of him on Thanksgiving. We were all around the Thanksgiving table. She was at our Thanksgiving for the first time. She must've been like four or five months old. And he's like sitting there like this, like having her dance on the table 
going like, oh, Winnie, Winnie, you know, it was, it's the cutest video, but those are the, that's the only video I have with him of her. And that's the only photo I think I have of him with her. And I, those are like, like if I, there was one day where I couldn't find the video and I spent like three hours going through every single thing, trying to find it. I was in a panic and now I obviously have it, but those are the kinds of things where like, you want to make sure you're saving them somewhere because from time to time you want to go back and look. And then I want to make sure Winnie has that photo. At some point. This gets back to the whole the thing at the beginning with, with uh, the, the person, the friend of Bob Saget and worrying that if I touch this text message, what are the, can I delete it? Will something go wrong? How do I make sure it's backed up in other places? And I think that people need to research what to do with text messages because there's certain ways if you sync it with your computer and once it's synced on your computer, you just don't touch it. That's so we mentioned in the book about how instead of just, you know, you're on your phone anyway when you're watching TV and you're just sitting there going through like a season or something, uh, why not make that time worthwhile rather than just scrolling anywhere on any site? Just go through and say, you know, I have 5,000 photos. Maybe it's time for me to favorite some. Maybe it's time for me to delete some. Maybe it's time for me to do that. And the same applies because people, I think, say, I don't have any time to go through these. Like, go through the text messages, take screenshots, save those screenshots and say, okay, this was, you know, with my, you know, friend who's no longer around. And it becomes something that you could then feel like you were productive in a time when you normally weren't. Because I think all of us, say we're busy, but then a lot of times we're completely wasting and killing time when we could be doing something actually productive. So I, I did lose a piece of content, a file that I need to find. I'm not giving up on it, but I don't know if I ever told you this story. <laughs> if I can find the video, I will definitely share it, but we're still fine. We're still looking for it. Oh, many years ago, probably, I don't know, a, a long time ago when I just moved to New York, I was, I I was on the show Ambush Makeover and it was this Fox, I think it was on Fox show. And they, what happened? So it was kind of a long story, but a friend of mine was another tech entrepreneur and had a company at the time um, that I guess was getting some sort of promotion or a feature on, on Ambush Makeover. And they needed to find a single person who would be, who was willing to, to go on the, on a show, but they couldn't tell me what the show was. So my friend said to me, I have a favor to ask of you. Would you be willing to go on a reality show? But I can't tell you what the show is, but don't worry. It'll be totally fine. You'll love it. It'll be so great. So I was like, sure. So this one day I walk into my office and I was, we were, it was like only a few blocks away, Jean, from, from our office today. I was like on 25th street. And all of a sudden this whole camera crew comes in and is like, guess what? You are on Ambush Makeover. And I was like, oh, no. I, I could can't believe not. It. <laughs> they, they chopped off 10 inches of my hair. They dyed my hair red. They took me shopping to buy this crazy dress and maybe shoes. I can't really remember. And then they, um, they had me go on a date <laughs> with a guy. And the guy and the whole, I guess the whole feed, it was a dating. My, my friend was the, was an entrepreneur who had started a dating, uh, like an online dating service. And so I had to go on a speed date with this guy that was being filmed. The whole thing was being filmed. Anyways, this whole episode is somewhere, but we've lost it and we have no idea oh, where it is. And it's, I can't find it anywhere. We are online. finding this. So I need to... <laughs> we are finding <laughs> this. What is, we, did you need a, like Abby, did do you feel like at that point of your life, you needed a makeover and then to chop off 10 inches no. of your hair and dye your hair and like, no, it was a disaster. It looked good for, it did look amazing that day. It looked really cool. Great. It, it, it looked horrible every day <laughs> after that until my hair. Grew it was horrible it was a bad we time we need bad time in my life. to find that and that is a perfect example because i have to tell you for years there was a joke in my family that my grandma millie who was the best uh she was just so she's exactly who just so out there and outgoing and tough and opinionated and she was the best and for years she told us that she had been on that show i think i've got a secret it was that classic show where you go on with a secret and it was that she had given birth to my dad and then my aunt 10 years apart. 
And she's like, I was on this show. I've got a secret. I've got a secret. And she'd always bring it up. And then, you know, after she was gone and I talked to my aunt, the aunt that knows everything, her daughter, the one that was born 10 years later, she were like, okay, I've spent like years searching the archives to find this show, this episode. But what's the big secret? I don't it's, understand it's that her secret. secret was that she gave birth to children 10 years apart, like on the same day, on the same birthday. Like my, my dad and my oh. aunt have the same exact birthday. So it's like that it was just 10 years exactly apart. And when we told my aunt, I'm like, can we find this? Do you have a copy of it? She goes, oh, you don't believe. She said that as a joke. She'd always say how she was on the show. I got a secret because just to make a big deal about how we're 10 years apart. And it's like a, it's something she did funny. And we're like, but she was so adamant about it. And I spent years trying to find this episode. I actually contacted the producer of like the person, the company that ran the production and asked them, can you give me an episode list of everyone that's ever appeared on the show? And he's like, we we're on for like, for, like years. It was popular. We had like five guests a show. We have no, like it could be thousands of people. I'm like, don't care. I want to get that. And as I did searches, put in a, in a spreadsheet, I could not find it only to find out years later from my aunt that it was a joke that There's she would tell people. So my <laughs> grandma, that's it. That's how she did it. Cause she's like, I thought it was funny. That's it. But for you, there's actual footage of you getting a makeover and imagine your kids watching this and being like, mom, that we, what, what happened? Um, yeah. Well, you're reminding me. So in addition to having voicemails and texts on my phone that are probably worth saving um, or definitely worth saving, I have, I use, I, I don't know. I don't know that everyone does this, but I use the voice yeah. notes feature on the iPhone. Mm -hmm. And I, because I, I play around sometimes with songwriting and I will sit at the piano and I'll just put on the voice note and I'll just, you know, play around and, and write a song and, or, or write a melody or something and then save it on voice notes. Mm -hmm. And that's just how I, I've been recording them for, for years like that. I don't, um, I never really thought about the fact that I would want to make sure to not lose those. But now that we're talking about it, you're right. Yeah. The, um, you should set an auto in the thing. Olden you should days, set an auto thing on iTunes and you could do the same through, uh, or through iCloud. You could do the same through Android, uh, where it backs it auto it automatically backs it up along with your notes, along with your photos, along with your videos. So you're saying in the old days? Well, in the olden days, I, <laughs> and I only know this because I just found this tape recorder that I used to use to record, to record, uh, to record songwriting ideas on. And I don't know what to do with it because I have the tape recorder now, but I don't, I don't know. I guess I'll need to re-record. I guess I probably just need to re-record the stuff that's on there's, there. There's things like you could do, like my friend and his dad are digitizing VHS tapes. Uh, they're not expensive at all now where you could plug it in. It could be USB based and you could play from your tape recorder and record it directly to your computer. And you could do things like that because I have tons of mini tapes when I did interviews with a lot of like people that are, you know, uh, we do whenever we did celebrity interviews, we'd record it and then I'd keep them. Mm -hmm. And I haven't listened to them in a while, but it'd be interesting to see who I interviewed and what they had to say, because some people ended up being really, really famous. Other people had really huge controversies in their careers. And I wonder at the time <laughs> if they said anything that would, I could, I could be sitting on mountains and mountains of really newsworthy uh, material that I've done nothing with, but you're right that the fact that I don't have uh, that tape recorder anymore, but I do have a digital one. And I told my friend who I'm still friends with, who'd interviewed tons of people. And I'm like, Oh, by the way, I just found an interview you did with Tony Hawk. I found an interview you did with, you know, a bunch of other athletes. And he's like, really? And I'm like, yeah, I'll send you the file. And it's fun because his mm. kids will totally get a kick out of it. It'll be like, yeah, I used to talk to people that were fun. I think I don't really store my digital keepsakes in as good of a way as I would like to. I think that I know what I should do, but it's hard to do it. So little by little, I, I, I try to, I, I try to make a dent, but I mean, I just, I don't really, I have, I have everything on my phone and I have everything on my phone backed up in the cloud, but I don't really, and I have, I also use Google drive, but I don't have a, I, I don't have everything organized as best, um, as well as I, I should, I think it's really hard. I think it's hard for people because it's not, it takes time. And so I think it's about getting into the habit of just kind of 
whether it's like favoriting a photo or putting something into, like I was saying before, putting something into a special, um, you know, photo album on your digital photo album, just trying to organize things bit by bit. But I think it's hard. But if there's that one video, like I, I'm talking about with my brother or the one photo, you know, of my brother or the oral history or certain things like that, I think you have to make sure. I mean, if they, if they matter to you, you have to do something with them and know where you've put them, wherever that is that, that you think is going to be safe, whether it's making sure you have a special folder in, in, you know, in the cloud, um, somewhere you should, you should make sure it's somewhere and you should make sure somebody else knows about it. Yeah. I I took a page. I, I actually followed what we did in the book because I figured since we were writing it, I had to actually do it and it was not fun. But I did it because when I was writing the concept, because a lot of these things we had to confront for the first time, too, because we've talked about like a lot of organization and getting documents and things like that. But it was the you know, I'm a huge uh, I'm really interested in like digital hoarding. Like I, I love watching hoarding shows for physical hoarding, but I love the concept of all this thousands and thousands of files and bits of data, millions of data that that just kind of sit invisibly. So you don't think it's a mess, but really it's much more than what you have in your home, in your life everywhere. But since it doesn't take up any space, you just kind of leave it alone. So one of the things I started with, which, and we mentioned in the book is consolidating everything down to a manageable level. And it doesn't mean delete things. It's like, where is everything? I had old computers. I hadn't rebooted in forever. I had old hard drives. I went through every single hard drive, anything that was meaningful on it. I took off. And I said, okay, this goes in a file on my computer. That's a photo, that's file. Everything else reformatted it. That hard drive's now garbage. I'm like, it's done. I don't want this. I am, after I had a bunch, I ended up giving them some hard drives away. Uh, but then from there, sorting on the computer down to like, what photos matter? Is it just stuff I'm gonna keep? Is it thousands? Again, not being picky. How do I get it all into one space? So in a way it's like funneling it down. And I realized I had a ton of Dropbox accounts. Because the thing with Dropbox is I never want to pay for it. So what you do is you get free storage to a limit, and then you do these other things to get more free storage. So I have like probably three, five gig accounts scattered, but I couldn't even figure out what it was. So I started consolidating all of those down to one, taking all that information and putting it in places where I do pay. And right now, a lot of it's trying it out. Like iTunes, uh, iCloud is a dollar a month for 50 gig. I never want to exceed that. If I'm exceeding that or their price goes up, I'm off of iCloud. Uh, but I think that's a good point, Gene. I think I think like even even taking an hour mm -hmm. maybe and or even half an hour and just jotting down or mm -hmm. figuring out where you might even have yes. those accounts. I was doing this with my mom the other day and we were setting her up with a Google Drive mm -hmm. account. And then while we were doing that, we realized she already had an Apple mm -hmm. Drive account um and or you know an apple cloud account where she was but she was like okay well it's, it's okay let's do the drive account too and now i'm realizing oh my gosh like what other services does my mom keep stuff in and it's gonna get all over the place any minute now and so it already yeah. is so even just figuring out where those accounts yep. are and then you could take some time maybe the next week or the next month and trying to figure out what's on those yeah. accounts but like even just locating what accounts you even have is Nightmare. Yeah, I'd say that I it was iCloud, and then uh, through Amazon, if you use Prime, you get free photo storage unlimited. Um, and then also Google, you get a limited up until I think it's like 15, 17 gig, which is a, a lot for most people. Um, but for Google One, it's around twenty dollars a year for like a hundred gig. And for me, I feel like having these redundancies. And figuring out which one will be the one that takes over in the future. <laughs> or a spider, uh, I'd say that w which one will be the one that kind of wins out? And if one disappeared, I'd be like, okay, I have the other two and it's an automatic backup. And I try to go through and keep it up to date, but it will be something that is an on, it's not a, it's not something you're, you finish, you know, it's something that, why do you want these photos? Why do you want these videos? Who else would be interested in them? I'm not big on sharing through those platforms because I feel like it gets very complicated. There's things I've shared with people that I don't even remember, or I don't even keep in touch with those people, like an old coworker. And I'm like, well, if I disconnect this, is this going to email that coworker? And we're going to have to have a weird, awkward conversation. Uh, so 
Oh, what? but wait, I just realized something really important that we have not talked What's about that? related to all of this, which is that you also need to, like my mom used to do this. She was amazing at this. I'm so grateful to her. But on the back of every single photo, she she basically documented our yes. whole lives, every birthday party, every every, you know, everything we did all of our activities, all of our first days of school. And on the back of the actual physical photographs, she would say like Abby's first day of school, 1982 or whatever it was. And, but today it, it with, with everything digital, unless you have specified what the thing is in, in some sort of comment or note associated with the photo, those kinds of details can get lost. And if you're looking, you know, if your kids are looking back at those photos in, in 40 years or 20 years, even, and, and, you're not around to tell them what that thing is. They might not ever really know. And those mm. details are kind of important. And so I think it is a good practice to put things into, whether it's it, put them into folders mm -hmm. um, or put them some, somehow categorize things and notate things so that people know what the photo is of in the first place. They're Remember, real, I know Ancestry and other sites have, category, have catalog old photos and do things like that. But it is so difficult to know that this photo that was taken that is only one of a kind and was kept dear to your family, it'd be interesting to say, wow, was this my great, great grandfather? Or was this just something my grandma picked up at a yard sale because she thought it looked cool and antique -y? And it, right. it's, it's interesting how it could actually alter family stories and how things work, not knowing how these things are or how they work. And a lot of people I know as they go through, it's also important to take photos of those photos and put as much information as you can and ask people because people would love to talk about that. It's not something that's a sore subject. If you said, what's this picture? Who, what baby is in this picture? And they're like, that's your dad. And really? Oh, what, you know, you're not going to know that. Or even knowing, asking your parents, like, who are these pictures? Oh yeah, that's, that's your uncle. That's, you know, your, your, your nephew. That's, that's what's interesting. Cause most of these photos, you don't, sometimes you could tell who it is. But then as people start disappearing and they're not around anymore, no one's going to be able to tell you that it's, you know, a lot of times, and you don't need a life story. A lot of people don't care to know an entire life story about their great, great grandparent, but just seeing it and knowing it exists, it does provide some sense of like, you know, link to the past. Totally. And sometimes people forget things in their past or they, or they invent things. And these kinds of photos can bring back. My mom always told us, I mean, my mom is crazy. She's amazing. She's incredible. She, she, she has said to us that when she went to college, she had no friends. She was, um, she was lived at home. She was, a, she got a full ride to, uh, to, to SMU. She lived at home and it was very lonely. And her brother ended up finding this photograph and telling us that is absolutely not true. She was the, she was the homecoming queen. She knew she had, she started her own sorority. She started the first Jewish sorority at SMU. I mean, all these things. And my mom was like, really? I, that's just not oh the way I remember it. And he was like, well, you obviously yeah. you know, have a bad memory. Which, but I mean, like these, right? These photographs have a story to tell. Um, and maybe can even bring things back for the people that there are, you know, they're, they're up. I love that this would become a keeping them honest kind of like exercise in a family where someone's like, I was so cool. Everyone liked me. And we're like, no, this look, <laughs> look grandpa, <laughs> this was you, <laughs> you were, you were a disaster. <laughs> but the good thing is your, your family will have, which we will find footage of you getting an ambush makeover at some point. And that will be a great reminder. And that's another thing. Now that we have the luck of, I realized something. There is really no footage, maybe there is out there, of me as a child on video. I, I watch like documentaries and they'll be like this family that grew up in the middle of nowhere, like during the Dust Bowl. And they're like, here's footage of me running around a field as a kid. I grew up right outside of Philly, total technology, like not one video of me as like a, a little kid. We just didn't, we didn't have that. Uh, I have so much footage of me as a little kid. We could do a, well, we could do yeah, a whole, a whole, uh, show if on, we do a, if we uh, do a documentary a true crime <laughs> thing we'll have tons of footage of you me it would all be terrible reenactments it'd be people like running around you know on their bike on their mongoose like out running like all the, the traffic but i'm wondering that that's what's interesting those things and being able to put it together for someone else it's also i think it'd be really fun for you to do it now like again people always think of this as like a future legacy type 
monument to you. But it's kind of fun now because it reminds you, especially over these past couple of years, things have been so hard. It reminds you of like times that are kind of fun, kind of interesting. You know, yeah. hearing an old voicemail, it does make me feel like at times at first, you know, it's sad. But then when you realize, okay, I'm not as sad about it, it it's kind of comforting. So, you know, doing that is right. a good idea. It, it, they're not just throwaway things that you should, you know, you should kind of honor these memories in a way. But also, if you have too many and it's just not meaningful to you, then you don't need to. Get rid of it. Make those decisions. 